Freya Martinson is a first year MA student at DSBT. She was born into a Catholic family in the suburbs of New Jersey and has had the good company of five brothers and three sisters. She recently received her BA in art history and philosophy at the University of Tulsa, writing a thesis on early Christian baptismal belief, ritual, and imagery. She describes her interior and exterior life as being, quote, under intense reconstruction <laughs> since taking a course with Dr. Hittinger on natural law and his late wife Jane's class on St. Paul's letters. Her hope is to carry her to mystic training into the fields of art and art history, both as a student and creator of art. Hello. No, 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 you don't want to see this. <laughs> um, all right, so I had a similar process as Brother Kersossum did. Uh, I drafted a couple um, versions and I couldn't really settle on what I wanted to talk about, um, but my reasons for abandoning the more like theoretical framework weren't, weren't, as, uh, weren't as impressive. I just thought it would be um, more effort than what I actually ended up doing, um, which is talking about myself. Uh, so, <laughs> um, uh, the, the question that I've posed for myself and that I want to pose uh, to my fellow students is where do I and where do we fit into all this, this discussion of lay vocation, um, of going out into the vineyard, of being called, what does it mean for me and what does it mean for you guys? Um, I come to the discussion as one of the most privileged and just appallingly blessed of millennials. Why? Because uh, the picture that Professor Moreland painted for us yesterday of me and my peers aligns with my own experience. It's bleak and depressing. Um, and on paper, I really should have been the exception. I was born to two very bright Ivy League educated Catholic parents uh, was brought to Mass every Sunday and Holy Day and attended the best public schools this country has to offer. Uh, nonetheless, the institutions that were supposed to uh, nourish and feed me and my peers intellectually and spiritually parishes schools uh, more or less dropped the ball. With most of my peers, I became intimately acquainted with the interior and exterior disorder and destruction that ensues when individuals and communities fail to think of God, themselves, and others properly. Like most, I have floundered miserably in my own version of what Augustine calls in his confessions the region of unlikeness, a region apart from and ignorant of God in which I was actively effacing the imago dei in me. In this region of unlikeness, appearances belie reality. What appears good is evil, and what appears repugnant is actually good. What appears false is true, and error has the ring of truth. However, I'm one of the lucky ones, the random survivors who, like Augustine, after hitting rock bottom, has been blessed to begin to know the delightful health and freedom that is thinking rightly about him and further acting accordingly. When I met Dr. Hinger and his wife Jane at the University of Tulsa, I was physically and psychologically functioning, um, but intellectually and spiritually deformed. At the time, I was something uh, I would call of a therapeutic agnostic with an unexamined and inconsistent commitment to utilitarianism. I was taking a year off of finishing my first year studies as a computer science major at a reputable Catholic university and was planning to knock off some credits during my time away. My plan was to get back, finish my degree, and get on with securing a lucrative job. I had somehow developed an immense disdain for liberal arts, uh, particularly philosophy and theology, as they were impractical and self-indulgent. Like I have very intense memories of being a freshman on, uh, at my freshman university and meeting people studying philosophy and theology and just thinking that they were like crazy. Um, and uh, I was like, all right, well, you won't be employed in a couple years. Um, I enrolled in Dr. Hittinger's class on natural law and his wife's uh, class on the letters of St. Paul to satisfy requirements for my degree, and I had no idea what I was getting into. Uh, it was excruciating. I remember sitting and flinching for the first few weeks every time um, Mrs. Dr. Hinger or one of my peers would say, Jesus or God. Um, up through high school, God and the second person of the Trinity were rarely mentioned and certainly not in public. And if they were, it was only in a historical context. 
Um, it was uh, like a construct of past clean civilizations and had long been debunked by science. Uh, so it was very bizarre and uncomfortable for me to be assigned passages from the Bible in, um, in any setting, let alone in an academic setting. Uh, but one semester with Dr. Russ and his wife, Dr. Jane, however, and I was hooked. I was um, intellectually ignited, and I steadily began to fill my schedule with religion, philosophy, and art history courses uh, taught by generous um, and brilliant scholars. And I got to explore scripture, tradition, liturgy, history, and art I, in earnest for the first time in my life. Outside of class, I began frequently the Newman Center, um, receiving the sacraments again, and taking all the steps of a 21st century college student Catholic co revert. So I was listening to podcasts, um, memorizing prayers, uh, carrying the Bible, and it was that I found in myself, quite unintentionally, um, undergoing the violent and paradigmatic upheaval that is a respectful, respectable Catholic liberal arts education. At last, I began to learn uh, through the generous instruction and example of the Hingers, as well as other Tulsa faculty, um, the priests and the nuns there in the community, I began to learn what it is to think of oneself and the world sanely um, and to consider both in relationship with God. More, most importantly, I learned that millennial, uh, millennia of people before me had experienced the same insatiable yearning that I desperately tried to numb and began to recognize it for what it is. Not a neurotic discontent, but a desire for God. Uh, Greg Wolf yesterday referred to the shock of the new. And it's been several years since this semester of encounter with philosophy and theology and falling in love with Christ and his church. Uh, and my life has felt like a string of um, delightful moments of the shock of the old and the ancient and the abiding truths and wisdom uh, that have been preserved and passed down for centuries by the church. Uh, my healing of the intellect and the will has continued here to DSPT, and here I'm getting the best formation available. Uh, last semester, I took a class on Aristotelian logic, philosophy of nature, history of modern philosophy, and history of ancient and medieval Christianity. This semester, I'm taking a class on philosophical anthropology, the theory of knowledge, and medieval philosophy. I get to study what everyone yearns to study, which is the reality. Um, I get to study what it means to be a human being, and I get to study the operations of the mind in attaining truth. Uh, so, so now that I'm here, what is my role as a lay student at DSBT, and where do I fit into all this? And um, in short, I think my role is to cooperate with the people doing their work with me. Um, it's to cooperate with my professors and to, with diligence and fortitude, grapple with this precious information um, that they're trying to pass along to me. And I've been given the, the greatest gift, um, the gift that we've said so often um, everyone needs and is so lacking in um, the world today, which is solid formation in the faith uh, and truth. And, um, and I have this gift of having a couple of years almost entirely free of worldly responsibilities where other people, you know, encountering Christ later in life have to navigate um, navigate the world of responsibilities and um, and learning and being formed in the faith. Um, alternatively, oh, I, my temptation, so what do I do with this education? My temptation is to, um, being given this gift, is to freak out and drop it, or squirm and then pass it to someone else, uh, or just freeze and hold on to it. Um, and then there's part of me that also needs to be wary of this temptation to um, take on responsibility prematurely, kind of uh, to, to feel like I'm learning all this information and to go out before I've really, um, I've really allowed myself to be formed. And so I, the, the way I think about it, I can't be like the, the racer in the relay who um, in their eagerness thinks that they have the baton in their hands, but like, and just starts like running down the track. Um, <laughs> And so I need to like really make sure I have a firm grab on the baton. Um, uh, I also need to just immerse myself in this community uh, and come to things like this and listen to the insights of, um, of adults who have gone through formation and, um, and have learned to live 
uh, live out of that, that period of um, learning and contribute to the community that they're in. Um, to look at my peers and my professors and the adults in my life um, who have developed habits of body and mind and, uh, and imitate them. Um, so my role is to be a student and to do my best to be a saint, which is um, to grow in virtue, to fight sin, accept grace, and to begin again when I fall. I need to remember where I came from, but not dwell on it, and look at where I'm going, but not fret over it. And I need to keep trying to love God and allow myself to be transformed by the community that he in his gratuity has placed me in. So my question to other students, uh, the more immediate, um, is how can we help each other in our formation here? Um, and then how are we gonna help each other this semester? Because I, I came back from my Christmas break with lots of New Year's resolutions on uh, how to like best, um, best approach um, my own classes and make sure I'm using this time to, um, to pick up the tradition that's being passed along.